Hey folks, this is Marsilio. Uh, thanks for your interest in my take in the markets. Here's the video update, review, some charts of interest, next moves, and a couple of data edges. Uh, so here we go. Uh, review, I'm going to start with Bitcoin actually, because that worked out really well. I thought um, Bitcoin after Monday might not be as strong as indexes. I pointed out a uh, significant data edge that was ending as a Monday and some weaker data that was in play uh, Tuesday to Friday. So that actually played out, um, although really the first day that it changed pivot status uh, on the, the pivots, when I say change pivot status, I'm really talking about the pivot levels themselves, um, monthly pivot, quarterly pivot, uh, half, year, half year, yearly, not the resistance levels. So there has been some chop around this half year level, uh, but the change in pivot status, so below the April pivot actually happened on Friday. Um, so not even the best short. However, others that were weaker were fantastic shorts. Here's E3, I'm clearly weaker technically. Um, this was a very good setup. Reversal bar on Tuesday, a reversal bar from top of the Bollinger Band. Still above support, but broke the pivot. So a little tell, weak buying under two resistance levels Wednesday. We also see uh, over and over again, uh, crypto is preferring Monday, Wednesday rallies. I mentioned that several times. And then here, um, whether swing or even daily MACD rolling over, uh, but much better risk reward on short on Ether and, and likely uh, some of the other ones that were weaker. ABA even better, uh, well below a falling 50 moving average. So this is how I approach it. Uh, buy strength, short weakness. And so if you're picking you want to short, um, you know, ADA is clear. You don't have to really mess with Bitcoin. We see that Bitcoin is also weakening and, and Ether, so it's going to support the idea. And, um, you know, the ones that started above all pivots, okay, they dropped too, but the easier shorts are what's below. Okay, so enough on that. On the indexes, I thought there was going to be a buying opportunity um, Monday, Tuesday. Um, and... There was on Tuesday, but the news on CPI slammed it. So Tuesday did form a low right on timing. That morning take was really spot on uh, in terms of starting higher and, and, and fairly decent size. Looks it's fairly decent size sell off at the time because it was so nailed. Um, but then you know, Wednesday started up here and CPI hit it. Uh, notice where the bounces are coming just weekly S1. I mentioned these weekly pivots and how important they are. And then uh, Thursday recovered, um, but again, gave it back on Friday with other news. Uh, so the, last week, a little trickier given CPI news and more news. So I can't say index was spot on. My main idea was buying early uh, on Tuesday for a rally into Wednesday, Thursday. Didn't, didn't work with CPI data. But I do also want to point out, um, well, I'll get to the VIX in a minute. And then uh, the other thing that was pretty good, uh, except so Friday, I thought uh, oil and gold were going to do well. Uh, and the top was down. Although the last week video said uh, some possible choppy uh, pause week, but top not in. And but now I'm going to I make I'm gonna, probably going to change my opinion based on charts and uh, uh, events of this week. Excuse me. I'm going around to other different charts. I'll get to those shortly. Um, so actually, uh, let's see, let's look at uh, gold. Um, it, I mean, it did go higher, but came down so hard on Friday, uh, the weekly results at some gain. Uh, and then oil, I think, um, actually finishing, yeah, slightly negative. So oil, a little bit more of a pause, pause, uh, pullback week. So, um, so now the question is, is, is that major top in, which I'll try and address next. Okay, so that's the review. Um, one thing, since we're on the topic of Bitcoin, I'm going to look at, I'm going to pull up one chart because um, I mentioned that a significant data edge ended on Monday. And here's how it played out. Here's the actual change. Um, the waxing has been dramatically weaker, especially this year, and waning's been stronger, you know, pretty consistently for several years now. It doesn't always work. Uh, it doesn't always work, but um, but but look at this. This 
you know, while waxing down, this one would did go up, but not nearly as much juice as the waning. So rally, rally, uh, this one down, held up sideways, this one down. So it's a pretty good edge, very simple. One of the most simple things I've got is just waning, uh, wax, waxing, waning on the moon for Bitcoin. Yes, it's not quite the same, a little bit more influenced. Uh, cryptos do seem to be particularly responsive to this cycle, especially. Uh, so it worked again. Um, that was one of the things in last week's video, and but that chart just shows it in a different way. Okay, so onto some charts of note. This is just a weekly pullback after a monster rally. And we did have some major resistance levels on play, which I'll get to in a minute. But if we just look at the 10 and 20 moving averages, which massive slope, this is S&P. The, the blue is the 10 MA weekly chart here. Look at RSI went super high up close to 80, rising 10 MA, super strong bear. It hasn't even really touched it until uh, just recently. And you know, so S&P rising 10 MA, uh, NASDAQ is just testing rising 10 MA and just pausing. Uh, Dow hit a little bit more, obviously, uh, with the, the dollar rally down to 20 MA. And Russell also weaker down to 20 MA. And then similar picture in cryptos. Bitcoin stronger, rising 10 MA. And uh, Ethereum weaker, closer to the 20 MA. Um, so it's just this is this is what happens, and the other thing I'll point out now is um, sentiment um, had gotten uh, on the low side. I mentioned that several videos in a row that we almost got a, uh, a stock sell signal, and we didn't get on. I have two moving averages here. One's faster moving than slower moving, and it's really better on, on both. But um, we did get. To, this one flirted with sell uh, end of January, early February, and then reversed. And then, so that was kind of a false alarm there. But here, pretty good stock uh, sell signal would have been last week in March. Actually, that was quite good to trim. And it, so combined sentiment signal, my uh, Dow top idea, which I did make one shot top day of the high, person only index top this year, call this year. Uh, you know, and um, combined with other action, uh, prudent to just reduce in some way. And uh, if you had any questions about whether that was uh, the right move, um, we can look at VIX. Uh, as I've said, VIX is smart money hedging demand. And I want to be on the side of smart money. If they're worried, I'm going to be worried. And somebody knew something was up because uh, VIX had been above its monthly pivot from Tuesday, and actually Israel did attack um, that embassy on the first, so maybe they, maybe the smart money knew there was something brewing. In any case, it doesn't really matter. VIX is above the monthly pivot, and even though that can happen, it comes back down. This time we had some other signals like major sentiment, uh, Dow, uh, top idea, which is based on a yearly level. So, you know, th there were signals to be reducing before Friday, uh, which was the big drop. So. Okay, uh, some other charts. Um, there's a basic idea, weekly pullback in play, is it done? I think that this crisis, uh, well, let's put it this way. Remember the great banking crisis of 2023? Maybe some of you do. A couple of banks folded, Silicon Valley Bank got into trouble with some startups and then First Republic was bought out, but big money stepped in and, and then it was over. Leaders continue to lead. and video barely looked like a blip. Other things were just scary for a little bit. These things happen. These are the shakeout moves. These are caused pullbacks. The much bigger question and problem longer term is, in my mind, the Fed rate policy, that the news that really hit where people are expecting uh, three cuts now down to two, cut in earlier, now cut later. That's the big news. And if inflation is stickier, that's that's a much larger concern. Um, so let's put these things together for what is likely the next move, or, or and especially the levels that'll be watching uh, to get on the right side of markets. Now, maybe a little tricky with these kind of unplanned news hitting hitting the tape, depending on Israel's response. But here's my preferred scenario. My preferred scenario is that uh, VIX move is done. 
and I'm basing that on a few technical levels and some timing. Uh, we reached a uh, monthly R3 on VIX with this explosion up and tagged the yearly pivot, which is pretty rare. Last time VIX has tagged its yearly pivot was, oh, right, the great banking crisis of 2023. Now notice there was some chop around that and maybe the same thing happens again. But if we come down hard from that yearly pivot, that'll be a sign that uh, low is in. Certainly, if we if it keeps on going up and it's above the yearly pivot, then that's real trouble and some escalation underway. Uh, yearly pivot 1835 on the VIX. Well, I do think um, these um, monthly R3s have and S3s have capped strong moves in the past. Um, on many different assets, uh, you know, uh, upside, downside. And then the uh, edge that I mentioned um, last few videos also, um, maybe not last week, but uh, certainly I mentioned a positive edge in play that supported a VIX pop. That's actually still in play, but this was the last week. It was in play for about a month. We got two pops out of it. Um, so, but that's, so there was a historical data edge for a VIX pop and, and uh, it doesn't work all the time, but, you know, worked Pretty well this time again. These data edges are just kind of amazing how how they tend to repeat or do pretty well. Uh, got the right take on the market. Um, so VIX watching this yearly pivot 1835, I think we'll see move back below. Notice it's going to take a big big drop for VIX to return to all clear status um, above but below all pivots below all moving averages. But I'd be happy if we see an un if we get down below the half year pivot 1578 that i would say very much increases the chance that friday's uh, stock index low and vix high is in and smart money will take off their hedges probably before everyone starts to buy because they recognize the signs of a low or that the main risk is passed so we'll see what happens with that other key levels dollar made a big breakout up for two reasons one was the um, Fed policy news based on CPI, and then uh, um, the war news, dash for cash, and it's yearly. So look at this, per, per yearly pivot to yearly R1. Yearly R1 is uh, 105.92. So anything above that level means dollar is continuing to break out. So one reason or other, whether it's the war situation or even more importantly, uh, Fed policy, that's not going to be good for risk assets, including Bitcoin. Um, so th those two things are going to be the tells, I think, in addition to the usual, you know, our indexes above or below weekly pivots or anything like that. Uh, speaking of pivots, I do, before I forget, I wanted to point out where the low is on Bitcoin, it, exactly on the second quarter pivot. So, um, you know, if you're not convinced by these pivots now, that was a you know panic, kind of fast drop, and that's that's pretty good for a level, um, the orange line. I didn't draw that after the fact. That's been there from the start of the second quarter, and will continue to be there until the change in uh, July. So okay, so preferred scenario is low is stock low is in, fix high is in, dollar fades. You know. It's kind of people realize like, but I guess this does depend on Israel's response. It seems that they have a win and Biden's urging de-escalation. And I think that's likely, you know, whether they listen or not, we shall see. And if they, you know, do anything, maybe they'll get another round of selling. Um, although it shouldn't be as severe as uh, Friday. I don't think so. Uh, so, like I said, it might, it might be a tricky in that regard, but if there's signs of the hostilities ending already, what's going to happen is some of the assets that rallied, especially gold and oil, they might get hit and the tech phase will be bought. Uh, kind of still like this idea, but I'm not sure it's underway. It seems like the headline said it's underway, but you know, Bitcoin isn't rallying. So anyway, the alternative scenario is studies continue and, and there's just signs of trouble. There's no sign of relief or trouble. And we get this kind of choppy, uh, choppy to negative week um, that is possible if 
hostilities continue and we'll just have to take it day by day. That's my take on that. So I have a preferred scenario, signs of trouble abating, see VIX down, dollar down, tech stocks leading rally, and the uh, gold and oil, oil especially get hit. Some profit taking on those have done very well. So I'm gonna be on guard for that because I do have positions in both. And then uh, alternative scenario, hostilities continue, no signs of trouble abating. I still think this week could be some kind of choppiness uh, and, and a little tougher to trade in that if, if markets just moving on headlines uh, with, with moves back and forth. Um, but, but we'll see how it goes. The other reason I'm a little bit more open, I'm gonna just pull up some charts of gold. And um, you know, unfortunately there's three, we've got the ETF, we've got the continuous contract futures and the current month futures. And unfortunately they're all in play. Now here's gold. Uh, this is a test of its yearly pivot, which held. This is the jump above all, all pivots late February. I sounded bullish, first time in years actually, it was really bullish on gold um, for very timing and technical reasons. And that's done phenomenally well. Now, what to do? So we have a yearly R3 tag on GLD, the ETF. Not the case on the continuous futures, which are just yearly R2 or the current month, uh, whoops, the current future contract. Um, I think volume's moving into the other one. This is, yeah, volume's diminishing on J and moving to M. Um, so they're, they're both, so R2s, but for whatever reason, the ETF, it's because the price history data on the futures and, and but it, it's kind of annoying with the commodity uh, uh, just uh, uh, indexes how how disparate they are. But what does give me pause is that the GLD ETF uh, reached its R three and have a big rejection, but above a, a massively rising ten of eight. So is that a good place to trim? Possibly, you have a reversal from yearly R three. Often those can be signals of a little bit more pullback to come. Here's NVIDIA almost reached it. And then there was a, but there was a test. So, uh, you know, I still like gold longer term because I do think that there could be a more bearish scenario this summer with sticky inflation. But I'm just talking about this week, if gold rallied in anticipation of worry of the safe haven trade over hostilities and those hostilities are abating, there's gonna be a pullback to gold. I think that's a no-brainer. And dollar, um, yeah. And then oil, similar. Oil, again, we got the ETF, we got the continuous contract future and the current future. Uh, did not really break out here, stopped at the prior uh, high from last fall. Um, so this is a uh, yearly R1 on USO. Be better to hold out of support, but it may not. Um, you know, RSI got up pretty high, and if the facilities are abating, it's probably going to be below. So I uh, did recommend mention oil in addition to gold, uh, for, you know, midway through, I forget exactly which day. So depending on the vehicle, you've got some decent gains in that and maybe um, time to rotate back into um, the, some tech winners. Um, okay, so that's my, those are some charts, especially in the gold that reached the yearly R3 that I wanted to mention, indicating a possible decent trading top, if not, um, you know, even if it's not the high of the year, uh, still a little bit on guard this week. Um, okay, so day by day, yeah, if you want my day by day tick, just check the Twitter, the X slash Twitter for the morning take, give you my best read. Uh, a couple of those did really well last week. And then lastly, I'm gonna finish with, um, and a very interesting data edge. This is going to be a, a little bit more advanced than I usually uh, present. And so this one is really for AstroFluent only. I gave one really easy one for Bitcoin, and this one is a little bit more advanced. I, I am. Uh, it's 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 tough to get into these without any Astro lingo at all. Um, so so for this for those who do know it, here's here's the study. Um, and for, you know, when I report a data edge to the video or get it on a spreadsheet, that's going to be something 
more uh, historically in play that's quite strong or you know recent and consistent in the current market environment and I think and, and applicable. So it's it, there's it is a judgment call, but the, and there's lots of ways to slice and dice the data and sometimes they're conflicting. But in any case, here's the study. I'm, I'm looking at 2000 a current because I wanted to expand the incidence. Um, and this is mercury uh, by term position indicated by the colors, uh, mercury in different terms, and then um, also motion. So, so note this is bull markets only. So it's it's pretty rare to have um, negative data in bull markets because generally up over time. But the interesting thing here is that last week, um, mercury was in this position here, and we're moving to this position. Uh, still retrograde, but moved out of this more malefic uh, term position. So I think that may help um, the signs. Uh, that's one reason. It's just one reason I have other reasons of abatement of hostility. And if that's the case, you know, I think I've, I think I've given the scenario that should happen. The favorite risk assets will all of a sudden people pile in and some of the safe haven trades that rallied on the war news will back off. Uh, okay, that's going to do it for this week. Thanks again for your interest. I'm uh, still working on, you know, putting this together in a more formal way, but, you know, you're getting a lot for free. It's just not going to remain free. But I hope you're finding this interesting. I continue to demonstrate, um, you know, intraday swing longer term setup so that you can use it in a way that works for you. Uh, I love to hear stories if, if it's helping you. And um, uh, yeah, this is my passion. Um, putting uh, timing and technicals together for the win and, and, and combining data on a very, you know, admittedly esoteric subject that shows over and over again how relevant these uh, theoretical perspectives are from, from many years ago still in play in markets right before our eyes every day. I, I love doing it. So thanks for your interest in my work and good luck.